The last few weeks, we've been going through a sermon series called Interruptions and Upheavals, which is focused on the ways that the Spirit or the Christ in us continually interrupts our lives in one way or another, gently or sometimes not so gently, but always encouraging us to grow and deepen and widen our view of an ever-expansive God. The Apostle Paul is in Athens in our scripture today. This is the center of Greek culture and thought. He's wandering the streets and he goes in and out of the temple and he can't help notice all of, in his words, the many shrines. But Paul is so passionate about Christ that every time he sees one of these statues to yet another God, he gets more and more angry. And so he begins spouting off and preaching in the streets to anybody who will listen. Finally, he's invited into a formal debate with all of the big thinkers of the day. And Paul is brilliant. He goes in, he's prepared, and he refers to one of their statues marked to an unknown God. And he completely reframes that God for them. He says, let me tell you about that God. I know that God. And he goes on to describe the God who is not able to be carved into stone or contained in sanctuaries or anything made by human hands. A God who resides in all of us in whom we live and move and have our being. This sounds a lot like what we've been talking about the past few weeks. That God is bigger than our building. That God lives in each of us, this loving, inclusive deity who moves in and through us and all of creation. And because of that, we are the church in or out of our building. Amen? Someone posted a great picture on my Facebook wall of this city street, and you see the arrows pointing to different people, that one riding a bike or another walking or working. And I think as a church, at least lately, we've become pretty comfortable with this image of ourselves. Amen? We are the church, not some building on Main Street. Yet, if I look back even for a moment at our shared life together, I realize that God has been steadily preparing us for this time. There have been a series of interruptions that have happened in the life not just of our church, but of the big worldwide church. Like the Holy Spirit has been continually tapping us on the shoulder saying, hey, look at this, or how about if you try that? Now, some of the interruptions we've paid attention to, and you know what? They've been really fruitful. It's why we've grown and shifted and ended up in this position. It's fantastic. But other tappings, well, we just haven't. Over the last several centuries, Christianity as a whole has made a slow but steady shift from being a movement to an institution. We've gone from being followers of the way to members of denominations. Remember, the early Christians had no buildings. They just had small groups or house churches. But soon, those churches began to develop. Next thing you know, we bought real estate and we created congregational structures and we sent out our mission teams, not in the name of Christ, but in the name of one church or another. We wrote bylaws, we incorporated, we administrated, we procedurized. My gosh, we even wrote books of church order and discipline. At the same time, as the church was becoming this institution we have now, we also began filling those institutions and those sanctuaries, lining the walls of our temples with fixtures and customs and ways, things which we loved that definitely enhanced our worship and mission. And you know what? We held fast to them. Why wouldn't we? The problem is, eventually they meant so much to us that they became our traditions. And hear me, I love traditions too. But in some cases, we have made some of our traditions and customs and styles so important that we've actually chosen them 
over some of the things that the Spirit has been trying to get us to do. All this time, the Spirit has been interrupting us gently and not so gently to draw us back to our roots, back to being a movement, followers of the way. And, and we've seen the signs. Since the 1960s, the church, the worldwide church has experienced a steady and drastic membership decline. People turning their backs on the institutional church, whether they're being hurt by the church or fed up with the politics of the church or the exclusivity of the church and not finding the time or the need or even the notion of wanting to go to church. But when the Spirit tapped us on the shoulder, we blamed society for changing, or Sunday sports, or shopping malls, or two-family working parents, or, or technology. Ah, the great disruption, right? Technology. Technology went largely ignored by our churches. We, we don't need it right? We don't want it in our sanctuaries. We want face-to-face -face person worship. We're good at that. Screens in the sanctuary? Oh, may it never be. Change the music? Oh, I grew up with hymns. I want my kids to grow up with hymns. I want them to learn those old songs that we all had. Online worship? Oh, well, I guess someday. And when the Spirit tapped us on the shoulder and said, Hey, this is a great way to reach people, to keep fresh, be creative, to change, to stop measuring attendance and engagement by how many people walk in the doors on Sundays that the church is way beyond where your sanctuary can reach. You know what we did? We chose tradition and architecture and aesthetics and attendance books. But church... We've been too stubborn, or what the scriptures call stiff-necked about this. We dug in our heels to resist change, but in the next breath we wring our hands worrying about the future of the church and about Christianity. And listen, I'm not shaming anybody here. Believe me, I love church and the church tradition so much that I became a pastor so that I could do church all week. Every single thing, every shrine in the life of our church has been important to me, has been important to all of us, and should be honored. But there is a fine line between honoring traditions and worshiping them. We need to take a hard look at what we've been so resistant to let go of in our church life and what we, in our love for the church and tradition, have allowed to hold us back from being the church God has designed us to be. Because now we are faced with a true upheaval. We may have dug our heels in before about change, but now we're forced into it. We may have squawked about too much technology, but you know what? Now we're dependent on it. And we will be reliant on technology from now on. Even when we get back into our building, we'll need to rely on technology to incorporate online connections into the regular life and worship of our church. No marginalized people at FBC. And I've said this a lot over the past few weeks, but I feel like we need to hear it over and over. What this means is a reimagining of the way we do and are church. And again, please hear me. In leading the church through this time, and actually let me reiterate that we will go through this time Amen. In leading the church through this time, I recognize our collective and individual grief. This is not easy. But it is why God has given us one another to help one another through this. Yet, and this is a big yet, if I am totally honest with myself, 
I feel also so excited and energized and enamored with the idea of keeping in step with the spirit to create and embrace and invite and imagine what church can be, what a movement looks like in the church. What would it feel like when when I set my spirit free to dream and to think about following God's lead into the future, not bound by anything made by human hands, and more that we get to do this together? That God appointed each one of us should be here for this exact time. My gosh, there is a fullness of joy in me that I cannot contain. This is brand new. And it's huge. Join me, church. We can be the whatever and whoever and everything and everyone that God has called us to be. And we may be in an upheaval, but God's purpose and plan for interrupting our lives has not changed. The Spirit will keep tapping us on the shoulder, urging and poking and prodding us to seek, to reach out for and perhaps find the one who is not really far from any of us, the one in whom we live and move and have our being. We are the church of Jesus Christ, a living and moving and growing and ever-changing, ever-fresh movement of the Holy Spirit in the world. Praise God. And God bless you this morning.